ever dream of finding a treasure? Something others have been looking for? Something they've been seeking? Something they're hoping that they will find? Well, if someone gave you a map and they claimed that if you followed all of the clues, you would find a treasure, would you be ready to go on a treasure hunt? Or would it depend what the clues were? Would it depend on how far you had to go or what you had to do? How much would you be willing to give up to seek the treasure? Let's take a look at our treasure map here. We can see some scrolls. We can see some mountains, some hills, some desert. And way over on the other side, we can see, looks like a building. Oh, with a star. Maybe it's a capital of a country. Um, then we can see the star Bethlehem. And we can see some gifts. Where could this be leading us? And what is the treasure that we are seeking? Our Bible story today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. The Old Testament was over. The Romans were in charge of the world. Roads had been built. Most people were speaking our common language. The time was perfect for a baby to be born. And God sent his son to earth, born of a woman. The beginning of God's plan for redemption. God's angel gave the shepherds the message that the Lord had come. The shepherds went to the manger and they found the baby. They went seeking the king and they found him. They worshiped him. They responded to what they had heard and what they had seen. And then they told others. This week, we're going to be looking at the responses of the Magi and King Herod. We're going to be contrasting those two to see what can happen when people hear and discover the good news about Jesus. Now, the Magi were learned men who had traveled a long way to find Jesus. They studied the stars and the signs, and when they saw this special star, the star of Bethlehem, somehow they knew that something special had happened. Somehow they knew that the Messiah had been born. They left everything in search of the Savior. Not only did the star lead the Magi far from home, but it led them through deserts and hills and rocky terrain. They traveled across the territory of Israel, moving towards Jerusalem. Where else would the king be born other than in Jerusalem? Well, the wise men show up in Jerusalem one day, telling everyone that they have seen a special star a sure sign that the king of the Jews has been born. They went to the palace of Herod, the ruler appointed by the Romans to be the king over the Jews. Well, wait, how could this be? The royalty knew nothing about anything. They had no flags flying, no music, no celebration, no festivities. They asked Herod, where is he that is born the king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east. We have come to worship him. Herod was dumbfounded. The Bible says Herod was deeply disturbed. Well, of course he was. He was the king of the Jews. The idea of a new king made him angry and jealous. Herod loved himself more than anyone else. He was afraid of anything that might go against his rule and his power. Would this new king take over his throne? In despair, he called his own wise men, and he inquired of them, where is this Christ child that was supposed to be born? They searched their sacred writings, and there from the prophet Micah, they read in Bethlehem of Judea. For it is written, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not thou great among the tribes of Judea? Unto you is born a son, the savior of the world. So now, we have the clues. This new king has been born, the one promised from way back in the Old Testament. The Magi, they've seen the star, and they've come a long distance looking for the Savior. They are filled with anticipation. And then on the other hand, we have Herod. He's filled with fear. He loves himself. He loves power. He's afraid of anything that might take away that power. So different people look at different things in different ways. Take a look at this picture here. What do you see? 
Some people will see a swan, others will see a squirrel. Or this picture here. Some people will see people, other people will see a candlestick. In today's story, Herod and the Magi respond in different ways. Their response reveals very different priorities. Pretending that he was excited to see this new Messiah, Herod sent the Magi off to Bethlehem to make a careful search for the child. And of course, as soon as they found the child, they were to report back to him so that he could come and worship the new king. They didn't know anything about the evil that was in Herod's heart. So they went, and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, and they were filled with joy. Arriving in Bethlehem, they found Mary, Joseph, and the child, Jesus. How do you think the Magi felt when they finally found the baby, Jesus? How would you have felt? At first, it didn't seem possible that this child could be the king. They had traveled so far to worship him. There was no royal guard. There wasn't anything to show the world that he was the king. But when the Magi saw the child, they knew that Jesus was truly their savior. They bowed down and they worshiped him. And then they opened their treasure chests and they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Soon it was time for them to return home. They were planning to go back through Jerusalem to share the good news with Herod. But God gave them a dream. He told them not to go back to Herod because Herod really wanted to harm the child. Herod did not want to worship the child as he had said. They obeyed those warnings from God and they went home a different way. Later in scripture, we read that Herod was furious. He finally realized that the Magi had outwitted him. He was filled with worry about what would happen to his power and his position. He was filled with anger and he unleashed his anger on the people. Herod wanted people to admire his kingdom and speak about how great he was. He thought he was pretty important. He was not about to give up his kingdom. He wanted power and fame and recognition. I'd like to show you a little marshmallow man here. To make one of these, you just take three large marshmallows and hold them together with toothpicks, and then you use small marshmallows for the arms and the legs. You can draw a face on your marshmallow man. Today, our marshmallow man is going to represent King Herod. Now, if we put our marshmallow man into the microwave, he gets all puffed up. Herod was all puffed up with pride. He thought he was pretty important. He thought that his kingdom was great. He missed the whole idea of the Messiah. He missed the Savior because of all his pride and all because of his desire to be important, all because of his need to be in the spotlight. Proverbs 11.2 says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. Another verse from Proverbs says, pride goes before destruction. As time goes on, our marshmallow man becomes deflated. Jesus really did not want Herod's throne. He wanted Herod's heart. The wise men saw the same signs and they knew the same scriptures, but they responded completely different. When the wise men came to the house where the child Jesus was, they saw the Messiah. Scripture says they bowed down and they worshiped him. And then they opened their treasures and they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the greatest gift that they gave him was not the gold, the frankincense, or the myrrh. The greatest gift that they gave the Christ child was the gift of true worship. It was there in that house that they yielded their lives to the one who was greater than they were. When they returned home, they were empty handed. They had given away their gold, their frankincense and their myrrh. But the treasures that they gave to that child were worth little compared to the value and fulfillment that they had in their hearts. They had worshiped the King of Kings. They found Jesus, 
the treasure that they were truly searching for. So does the promise of Jesus make us anxious like it did King Herod? Or does it make us excited like the Magi? The Magi did not lift themselves up like Herod did. They lowered themselves, bowing down to worship the one greater than they were. Worship is the response that we give to the goodness and greatness of God. He is the one who created us. Worship is an exciting privilege. It shouldn't be something that we have to do. It should be something that we want to do. We want to do it because of what Jesus did for us. Without worship, without putting God at the center of our, of our lives, we can become filled with pride, just like our marshmallow man that represented King Herod. Pride can take over our lives. Our Bible verse for this week is Jeremiah 9, 29, 13. You will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. The Magi gave it all. They left their homes, their families. They traveled a long distance seeking the Savior. And when they found him, they gave their hearts to him. And just like them, we want to give Jesus our hearts too. And when we do that, we will also be able to give him our time, our talents, and everything we have. We can worship God as we play outside, as we spend time with a good friend, as we read a book, as we engage in other activities, as long as they connect what we are doing with God's greatness, with his beauty and his splendor. So sing to him, pray to him, tell him you love him, dance for him, give him gifts, bow to him, celebrate who he is, celebrate what he has done for us on the cross. I'd like to challenge you when it's dark, Go outside and find the brightest star. Remember the story of the Magi. Remember their joy in finding the Savior. Remember how they worshiped him. Remember how they bowed down. Remember how they gave their hearts to him. And then with your family, talk about the gifts that you might give to Jesus. Then thank Jesus for the gifts that he has given to you. This Christmas story is a wonderful story. A little baby born in Bethlehem who is the promised, long-awaited Messiah. And our story is from the Gospel of Matthew. And as Matthew continues, we hear more of Jesus' story. We hear of his teachings, his healings, and his miracles. We learn about the Last Supper. We learn about his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, his betrayal by Judas, Peter's denial, Jesus' final words on the cross. We learn about his death and his resurrection. We hear Matthew's very clear message. Jesus is the Christ. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Make Jesus the Lord of your life and give your heart to him. The Gospel of Matthew ends when Jesus speaks the final words before his ascension. Therefore, go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always. Let's pray. Almighty God, may we be like the shepherds and the wise men and tell others the good news. May we worship you in all that we do. May we praise you for who you are. And may we seek you and find you and make you Lord of our lives. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.